Years ago, I read a book by Bill Bright, who started Campus Crusade for Christ, which is now called Crew. And this book on the Holy Spirit said, just, just ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. Ask the Holy Spirit to be with you in a meeting you're going to go in or something you're about to do and see if you don't feel a different outcome than what might have been. Over and over, I have found that to be true. From New Life Ministries, this is Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn. I'm Stephen Arterburn. And Going Deeper is all about taking the tough issues, the hard issues of life, looking a little bit deeper inside so that we can gain some insight into our lives. Hi, Steve Arterburn here, and thanks for joining me for Going Deeper. You know, we're doing something really complicated and complex. We're going through numbers. <laughs> Not in the Bible, but just numbers. And we went through the alphabet, and now we're on number three. And here's my number three. It's kind of faint. Because the three that I want to talk about, it's mysterious to a lot of people. And here's another thing. When, when great religious leader people get messed up, it seems to be over this. And what I'm talking about is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And what they get messed up on is the, the Holy Spirit and the Trinity and how all that works together. But you know, if you doubt that God is three in one, uh, we know God created the earth, but God is also Jesus, and we know He walked the earth. And then before Jesus walked the earth, there are many instances in Scripture that talk about the Holy Spirit being here. In fact, John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit while he was still in the womb of his, uh, not room, while he was still in the womb of his mom. You know, when people say it's not really a baby in there, well, if it's not a baby, how could whatever it is then be filled with the Holy Spirit? I'm a big pro-life guy because there is a baby inside that mom. So much so that John the Baptist uh, was filled with the Holy Spirit. So here we have this all-powerful God the Creator who created life on this planet. They haven't found any life anywhere else. Scientists get all excited when they find stuff that might one day, give or take a few billion years, develop into life. I don't think so. We are the life that God has created for this universe. I really believe that. Be nice, you know, to know that if that's not true. But I believe that because Jesus died for my sins. And if there's another life somewhere, then Jesus is going to have to die for their sins. And uh, it just doesn't make sense to me how it could be. But here we have God the Father who created us, gave us life, and is rich in mercy and wants us to do great things. It says that He created us in a wonderful way, fearlessly, wonderfully made to be something for Him. And we deviate from that, but He's always willing to get us uh, right back on track. So God, the all-powerful, almighty God, He has a will for your life. He created you. He is real. And so many things have, have happened that would, by in most courts, prove that He was real and alive, but we just ignore them and neglect them and think they're coincidence or whatever. But God's been watching out for you. A lot of times we complain about the things that happen to us, but we never know all the stuff that might have happened before. My son's in a great band with a great leader, um, and the leader has helped my son see, like when they stayed in a gym during a competition, the principal of that school they were at during the day while the competition was going on said to the leader, I got to tell you something, any of these kids, I would want to be my own child. They are such great kids. And the leader said, and Solomon was repeating this of all the things that happened, and they were second best in the nation. He says, we were winners before we ever entered that competition because that principal said he would take any of us as his own child. See, that meant something to Solomon because he had a great leader to help him appreciate that. 
You know, all of us have an opportunity to lead, to be something to somebody and, and have character, to have a plan that follows the truth that God's laid out in His Word. And then here we are with Jesus, this, this amazing Savior who comes in the form of a baby, shows us how to live, teaches us amazing things, does miracles, and then dies for our sins. Just makes sense. He pays the price so we don't have to. And um, I don't know, it's just a gift that's so amazing. A lot of people don't want to believe it. There's God and there's Jesus. And before Jesus leaves, he says, you know, I'm leaving, but you have the Holy Spirit going to be sent here to comfort you. And this Holy Spirit is here and does want to comfort us, does want to kind of get us back on track, convict us of things that we're kind of doing wrong. But the Holy Spirit is a supernatural power that just too many of us ignore or don't acknowledge. It's the part of that triune God, the three in one. Years ago, I read a book by Bill Bright, who started Campus Crusade for Christ, which is now called Crew. And this book on the Holy Spirit said, just, just ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. Ask the Holy Spirit to be with you in a meeting you're going to go in or something you're about to do and see if you don't feel a different outcome than what might have been. Over and over I have found that to be true. Because the Holy Spirit is real and since God is love, the Holy Spirit is love, wanting to comfort us and empower us and convict us on how to be better people. So that's my three. It's the three in one. And so whenever you hit a, an extreme limitation over here, that one big thing that's causing you so much trouble, and then you realize that me by myself can't deal with this, but surrendering to God, you know, that, that would be an amazing thing. Or asking for help from somebody else, that's the two. Then when I finally surrender to God, number three, I can't handle this. God can. I'm going to let Him. I surrender to God. I'm surrendering to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And with that, as my companion, my partner, with that threesome coming alongside of me, well, there is no limitation as to what might happen. And in Ephesians 3.20, it actually says that that God will do for us and give us things so incredible we can't even think them up, can't even imagine how great it could be. So I'm hoping and praying that this most valuable combination of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, is it's the three in one that you trust your entire life with. And that's my number three on Going Deeper. Thank you for joining me for Going Deeper. I hope something I've said may have helped just a little bit. If you have a question you'd like me to answer or comment, just email me at stevesocial at newlife.com. I'll see you next time. If you want to support Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. And if you know someone who would benefit from this episode, be sure to share it with them. See you on the next Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn from New Life Ministries.